Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Christopher Giannini, and we're throwing you another curveball. It is the Sunday night show. It is April the 11th. I'm recording this Sunday evening after the Masters, after a big day of baseball, and uh, Gary is doing me a solid. I must take off on Tuesday and head down south to drive some equipment that uh, my company is selling. And uh, so I cannot do the Tuesday show. Gary's doing the old switcheroo with me. I appreciate him. So you got me tonight. If you get uh, get the podcast tomorrow morning, you're going to be expecting to hear uh, Gary's uh, sultry voice. You're going to get mine. I apologize for that. But I am excited to be here on this Sunday night. I can't tell you I love the Sunday after the Masters. And we are going to get into the Masters. But before we do, let me pay some bills real quick. Let's let's thank the folks that helped us get here. All right. First off, that is my partner and friend, Gary Seegers. He has put together winningcureseverything.com, and he has built that website up and done a lot. Go check it out. See all the work that he's put into it. And anything you want to find out about he or I, if you want to buy some merch or, or anything of that nature, you can find it all there. Okay. And then the folks that really pay the bills are our friends at sbr.com slash NCAA or sportsbookreview.com. They pay the bills. We appreciate them. They are unbelievable partners for us, and we are just glad to have them. Could not be more excited to be a part of them. You can find all your gambling needs. My boy Donnie and Kyle are wearing it out with baseball. You got the guys hitting hockey up right now, NBA going on. You can find Anything you need for content, you can get there um, for your for your gambling needs, and uh, and and I promise you they'll take care of it. the 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 guys and girls over there are great at what they do, and we love being associated with them, affiliated with them. I'm glad they put up with my crap, and uh, that's it. We're gonna get into it. I love it, love it, love it. We are going to start nowhere else but with the Masters. And, man, I thought it was a great Masters. I thought it was a lot of fun. Now, today was a little anticlimactic as Hideki Matsui just had just a – sorry, Hideki Matsui. That's a baseball player. Hideki Matsuyama had just a hellacious lead going into today and didn't seem to show any signs of giving it up. He had one bogey on the day. It just just did not – he he looked unbeatable uh, throughout this tournament. Played just incredible golf from start to finish, and uh, it was just really exciting. The one time we thought it could get close, it it was it was in a situation where Jim Nance he hits it in the uh, Metsuyama hits it into the water, and and it looks like uh, uh, Xander Shoffley who's playing with him nine under at the time. Matsuyama's thirteen under at the time. Look, or maybe he was twelve back then. But he was coming back down. Oh, no. That's right. He was 11. He was about to come to 10 after that. So they were going to be real close. And on the next hole, Shoffley doinks it in the water. Then from the drop zone, hits it into the crowd. Triple bogeys. Had a chance to take the lead. Had a chance to at least tie. Had a chance to make this thing tight with three or four holes left to go. And he just – he just – He jacked up one hole. That's what can happen at the Masters. Um, It was so tough because I had money on on Xander. I love Shoffley. He's one of the guys I rode in this tournament. But let's talk about what this means for Hideki Matsuyama. Um, His first green jacket, think that's a huge deal. believe it's his first major win ever. The most exciting thing for me is going to be watching the Olympics this year as Japan hosts the Olympics. He is going to return there, a conquering hero, with his green jacket, leading the Olympics uh, in golf. And, and I think that's a great story. I think it's amazing how the, the, the guy who's going to – who won the Masters and who's going to, to host basically the Olympics, being the best – Japanese pro in golf um, is going to get to do so coming off of a huge major victory. 
Uh, I think that's a great story. I'm excited to see it. I love the Olympic golf stuff. It, it was just great. Second best story, guy who came in second, not even close. Uh, I'm going to try to say this name. Gary's the one I always leave to the enunciations. Will, um, oh, Zella Torres. I know how to say this. I, I, reading it intimidated me. Will Zella Torres, rookie on the PGA Tour this year, playing good golf. No way, no how would I have seen this kid coming out of nowhere he, like he did. You're talking about the only player in the tournament to have four straight days under par. I, I, unbelievable. Usually in the Masters, that's good enough to win. Uh, if it wasn't for Matsuyama and his unbelievable, um, I think, Saturday uh, performance, I, I, I don't – I, I think we're telling a different story here. And Salazar's, um, uh, Salatoris, sorry, story is, is, is even that much more elevated. His, uh, his, his welcoming into greatness of golf is, is, is way earlier than we ever thought would happen. But coming in second, finishing strong, the, the highest ranking, um, American, obviously, because he's second to Messiama, finishing nine under, I believe. Just a just an outstanding performance. This dude swung the sticks great all weekend long. Third favorite story. Guy came in third. My guy from a long time ago. Jordan Speeth continues his climb back out of the cellar, back out of the gutter, back into the limelight. Came off with a victory last year, uh, last weekend. Sorry, into the Masters now. We a lot of people picked him to win because they thought he was he was close he was in contention. If Hideki wasn't just running away with this thing, Spieth would have been a huge storyline as well. He would have been charging at it late, and 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 just his comeback, his turnaround is so unbelievable. It's strange. We love in sports. We love a great comeback story, right? But usually, it's somebody who either got hurt. Okay, and they got to come back from injury that we never thought they could come back from. All right, or it was a self-inflicted kind of thing. Uh, they get into drugs or alcohol or women or or gambling or or some type of problem, some type of vice brings them down. But it's a self-destructive thing. With Jordan, his game just went to shit, and to our knowledge, as far as we know. It, it wasn't contributed to any advice that he has, any type of, of personal problem, which if all that came out now, it would make total sense because we've never seen somebody, you got to think back years ago, him and Rory were number one in the world at golf at their heights, and he was the young stud, and Rory was kind of the veteran, and, and it's just, I mean, we... Now, that was greatly uh, exaggerated that could he take the mantle from Tiger? I, I never got on that realm because I just don't think there's ever going to be another Tiger. I also think the sport of golf is so different thanks to Tiger, by the way. We'll, we've never seen fields this deep. The, the, um, the great talent in golf that's young and unbelievable right now is so deep and so good. We'll never see anybody as dominant as Tiger was. But that's because of Tiger. All these guys grew up loving him. Now, back to Spieth. When he lost it, he just lost it. And nobody could figure out why he just lost it. This guy with all this talent, who's been this great his entire life, just fell apart. And he didn't fall apart for a little bit. He didn't fall apart for a season or, or two. I mean, we're going on like four or five years of him just completely falling apart. You're talking about he used to be the best in the world at this. Seeing his climb back means a lot to me. I was a, I was a speed guy early on. You guys know me. I pick and choose some things off of very strange reasoning, okay? Like, Gary and I have talked about this before growing up. I was a Coke guy. I'm not a Pepsi guy. I don't know why. I can't tell you. What made me ha like make that choice when I was a child? I'm talking child, child. But to this day, we don't let Pepsi in our house. We just, I just don't do it. Okay, like 
I, I, we always grew up eating McDonald's. We didn't eat Burger King. I don't know why that is. I can't, I can't tell you. They're literally in my neighborhood right across the street from one another. To this day, I have never purchased Burger King. All right. Now I have gone to Burger King because other people have requested to go to Burger King when we were poor and running around and, and hitting the streets of, of a young guy. But, but that was their call, not mine. Okay. I never willingly got in the car and drove myself or anyone else to Burger King. I can't tell you why. Okay. Now, this is one of those strange ties that I have that actually has a little bit of principle to it. But I love Under Armour. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't even own a lot of Under Armour stuff. I think I own like one Under Armour hat that I think that's the list of my extent of loving a brand. Okay. I hate Nike. Right. My hatred for Nike has nothing to do with anything that Nike has done in the last several years. I worked for a company that was a contract of Nike, where I had to go to a Nike facility every day about four or five, uh, or about six years ago, okay? And the direct manager that I dealt with at my Nike facility, um, he was awful to me. We'll, We'll say that. Well, he was just awful to me. Personally, not, not at my job. He kept me there because I was exceptionally good at my job. And the people that worked over him were massive fans of me. And so he made my life miserable and, and made personal attacks on me. It was all about my weight. So it was all stuff that's my control. Okay. I'm the one that let myself turn into a fat ass. All right. I'm the one that ate myself into this situation. I'm not a victim of anything for that. Okay. But, but he chose that. And, and he berated me relentlessly. Um, and it wasn't in a trying to better me. It was a, he was embarrassed that I was the face of security for, for his company. That was, that was basically it. When that day happened and I finally left there, I vowed I would never wear another Nike thing again. And to that point, I have one pair of Nike sweatpants that was a gift for me over a decade ago. And one LSU polo that was a gift to me from, from about a decade ago. That, that are Nike, that's all the Nike I wear. So, take it back. Jordan Spieth, Rory, uh, McElroy, number one, number two golfers in the world. One was a Tiger guy, or a Nike guy. One was an Under Armour guy. I, it was a no-brainer to me. One guy continued on his reign of greatness, and the other guy got the yips for like five years and uh, broke my heart. So, the win last week was a big deal. Him crawling back, fighting like hell, finishing third in this one, big deal to me. Personally, loved it. Went on a long story about things that have nothing to do with golf or the Masters to get to a point to where I love Jordan Spieth. Random reason why, but he's my guy, and I want to see him come back. Last note on the Masters I'm going to tell you is this. Now, I'm not going to – remotely consider myself a a golf uh, handicapper or someone who knows what they're talking about when gambling golf. I watch a lot of golf, okay? And and I like golf a lot. I'll talk golf with anybody who will let me. We just don't usually do it on the show. Sometimes it's a chicken and egg thing. It really doesn't get ratings a lot. And there's not a lot of, like, golf stuff that most people in the country care about, okay? It's, it's for the most part, it's a, it's a rich white guy sport, all right? And let, let leave it at that. Like, if, okay, whatever. I don't even play golf anymore. I'm just so bad at it. It's not even fun to try. Um, but I enjoy watching it. This tournament, this tournament, I nailed. I mean, I hit it woo, out of the park. Could not have hit it out of the park any more than I hit it out of the park. Outside of, I didn't have Hideki Matsuyama winning the thing. I didn't pick the winner. But outside of the winner, I picked five guys to finish in the top ten. All f- uh, Four out of those five, Patrick Cantlay, the only one not, finished within the top ten. Had bets on those. I had 11 different matchup bets going in this tournament. I went 10-1 and one in those bets. Patrick Cantlay over Tony Finau is the only matchup I lost. That's it. That's the list. And And – and I, I said first off, first off, let's so so got to the bets, nailed the bets, knocked those out of the park. Patrick Cantlay is the only one that let me down. 
before the whole thing started, Gary and I talked um, Wednesday in our Wednesday live show, and I said how this course was going to be greatly different, all right? Gary didn't think that the course would change a lot between November and now. I thought it would change a ton, and it was only going to be changed in the greens, but that's where it killed everybody, all right? They finished in November. Dustin Johnson finished 20 under at the Masters. And I said, ain't no way. They're not getting close. What I say, the words out of my mouth, I remember, they going to cut it in half. What a debate. Hideki Matsuyama finished 10 under. I believe I believe I had that as well. Um, I, I just I just saw I saw guys that I thought were going to play great because I had a feeling of what this course was going to look like and what it's going to play like. And I just felt really good about these guys play this style of golf. And one guy I bet against didn't win this bet, but Bryson DeChambeau to miss the cut. My pick was right. He just didn't miss the cut, but he was out of this thing quick. He was out of this thing early. He just wasn't so far out where he was going to miss the cut. That's all. But that's not a knock on Bryson. I actually like Bryson. I know a lot of people hate him. I like him. I like what he's trying to do. I like that he's trying to to see the sport from a different angle and do things different. If that dude learns to putt, he's going to be unstoppable, and he's going to change the game of golf forever. Okay, just just like in baseball has become nothing but home runs or strikeouts, like the analytics have proven fly balls are worth nothing. Just hit it out of the park. And and if you strike out, it's no big deal. Who cares? But if you hit it out of the park once every five times, it's worth it. It's you'll, you'll score more runs. If Bryson's way of doing things, if he ever can learn to putt, he's going to change the golf course, the way golf is played completely. The issue is, is. I know right now Bryson's not putting well. And the one thing that Augusta's going to do this week that I knew was going to happen was they were going, and I, and I didn't know this because I'm magic. I knew this because the information's out there, that they worked really hard on hardening up the greens. They're going to make them really hard and really fast and, and basically impossible to putt, all right? And, and, and I just knew that was going to cripple Bryson. It was going to destroy his game, and it did, and I had that as well. That doesn't mean I hate Bryson. It's just a pick I made. And and I'm sure in a couple of weeks I'll be picking him again because not all greens are going to be that difficult. So, anyway, that's that. Um, I love the Masters every year. If you are new to the game of golf and want to – if you've never gotten into it before, okay, and you just say, oh, you, you see a lot of people on Twitter talking about stuff and you're interested at all, I'm going to tell you, don't don't try to find a small tournament. Wait until one of the majors is happening. Just wait until one of the majors is happening. And when a major comes along, just, just watch it. And and you can go through a betting guide or you can you can look at a bunch of different things, information out there to see like the top 10 or top 20 guys that should finish in a certain thing. And just pick four or five of them to follow. You don't have to bet them. Just follow them. Just let them be your guys throughout a tournament and ride the ups and downs with them. And just see what happens. Golf's a great game. It's an unbelievable sport. I, I really love it. I really appreciate it. The Masters, there's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it. I, you know, it, it is what it is. I think it's great. And uh, and I'm going to leave it there. Next up, we're going to hit some baseball talk. And when I do the shows, I'm very, very open about my biases. Okay. So we're going to hit two big stories. They're both close to me. So there we go. My San Diego Padres, Saturday night, had their first no-hitter in the history of the franchise. And it didn't come from some mercenary that they went out and got. It didn't come from signing some big Cy Young or stud or whatever. No, no, no. No, no, no. A local kid. Grew up, made the bigs, took a hometown discount, got drafted by the Padres, worked his way through the system. Joe Musgrove, and let me make sure I'm saying his name right. Da, 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 da. I'm pretty sure. M- Musgrove. Joe Musgrove, nine innings, 27 up. Twenty well, Not 27, that's a perfect game. But got no hits, 10 strikeouts. 
if you're not a baseball fan, you don't understand this, okay? No hitters are a big deal. No hitters are special, all right? They come from the most random of times and random of places. For it to come on a team where the local kid grew up, the only jersey you ever see him wearing growing up are Padres jerseys. The only sports memorabilia we have pictures of Joe growing up are in Padres gear. That's it. That's the list. This this guy's never put on a Red Sox jersey. He didn't wear a Yankees hat or a Dodgers hat growing up. Like, that's it. He's living the absolute American dream. He's living the dream that every boy who grew up wanting to play baseball is living. And he throws the first no-hitter. And we're not talking about in 20 years or 30 years. or anything. We're talking this franchise has been around for over 53 years. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't tell you the joy. One of my best friends, one of the groomsmen in my wedding, works with me now. One of my best friends is the reason I'm a huge, a huge Padre fan and been cheering for them through all the slum years, especially while we were in college. They were they were bad, bad, and me and him were sitting in the dorm room watching some bad baseball late at night. He sent me text message almost in tears. And, and it meant a lot to him. He did play baseball in California. He was a pitcher at the JUCO level. He, you know, he he is the boy that dreamed of this. Now, I grew up worshiping um, uh, Tony Gwynn, okay? that This is my affinity to the Padres. Is one of my three early, early baseball heroes was a Padre. That matters. That changes a boy's life. You, you never lose your first love. You never forget the things that matter to you when you were a child. Those things are always going to matter to you. Watching that game, seeing that final pitch, seeing that final out, that last inning, seeing the crowd, I'm so glad San Diego's allowing fans. I'm so glad Major League Baseball's allowing fans. If Joe Musgrove, so Joe Musgrove, Jesus Christ, Chris, get the words out. If Joe Musgrove had to do that in an empty stadium, it just would – Everything would be so defeating about it. He got to do it at home in San Diego in front of fans. There were there there are videos going around of of men crying, crying, watching this. It matters. It matters. And it mattered. I think it matters that now had it been anybody else, had it been Blake Snell, who is the mercenary, who is the free agent that they went and got, okay? Had it been Blake Snell, it would have still been unbelievable. But it being a local kid, a homegrown kid, I, I just think that makes it so much more important. And I I know Tatis is hurt. I have no idea how long he's going to be out for, okay? I, I don't know that this team can be really special without Tatis. I think he's that important. But damn, I think that's a sign of this team is going to be special. I think they're going to have a special season. I know I picked them to win the World Series, and I know that's a Bat shit crazy pick. That is a long shot of long shots. They should not be in the World Series conversation. I, I can't handle it. I can't help it. I love this team, and I think they're great. I think they're really, really great. Watching Joe do what he did meant a lot. I thought it was special. I was really proud to see it, and, and, it, and it meant a lot. Baseball story number two. My. Boston Red Sox, where are we at? Over here on this side. My Red Sox. My Red Sox are on a six-game winning streak, just completed their second sweep in a row. If you would have told me that my Red Sox would have started the season six and three and be number one in the AL East today, right now, after nine games, I would have told you I believe that. I believe it. Not only do I believe it, I think it could happen. If you have told me that was going to happen after they start off 0-3 getting swept by the Orioles at home to open the season, I don't know that there's anything you could have done to convince me that that would have happened. I, I just don't believe it. I knew this team was going to be what I would call this sneaky good, very exciting. I thought that there was a chance that um, 
Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, or J.D. Martinez could be in the MVP race for the American League. I really believe that they have three guys that legitimately could be in that conversation. And I'll, I'll be hot damned if if they all shouldn't be. Zan, uh, uh, Rafi is, is the one that started off the slowest. I'm talking as ice cold as ice cold gets. But but if you look at the last three games, oh boy, his pants got set on fire. And, man, he is just blazing hot. J.D. Martinez, I don't know what you do with that. I, I really don't. You, you, you can't keep the ball in the ballpark, and he's just mashing them everywhere, okay? There's no pitcher that can stop him right now. And, 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 and Xander, Xander's not hitting the home runs. But, man, that, that guy is so hot right now. I'm talking, I think, four or five games straight of this six-game win, hit streak, win streak. He has, like, a two-hit game in, in all of them. I mean, he's just he, – they can't get him out. He's just an on-base machine. J.D. Martinez, by the way, has, has uh, tied the, the Red Sox all-time list for longest streak with um, uh, extra base hits in a row. I think he's at nine. Um, so that's that's kind of a big deal. I think that's really cool that he's on a nine-game streak. That's the longest in the league, I believe. Um, I think the Sox team is fun. Now, I'm not getting out in front of my skis here. I don't know that I believe this team could win a World Series. I don't know that this team could be special. But I think they're a whole lot of fun right now. And and I think they've got some pieces. And if they're in play at the trade deadline, this is a franchise that, A, is willing to spend the money, and, B, um, willing to make moves to to go get whatever pieces they have to get, to bring in those mercenaries, to, to try to win, to try to make a run. I, I believe that. I really think they're that good, and I really think they have that that potential in them. Um this is a this is a, a a three-headed monster lineup that that I don't I don't know anybody in the country wants to face. It's going to be hard to find three hitters in a row as good as those three guys right now especially. Um so I I think it's pretty special. I love my Red Sox. I was uh very upset when the season started because I was I've waited so long for baseball to get back. When they started off 0 and 3 to the Orioles, I just thought it's going to be a long season. I'm glad baseball is back. I love this team. I've I've loved this team since I was four years old, and and I I just wanted I just wanted to watch my team play, and I kind of I kind of took a deep breath after they got swept and just said, you know what? If it's a bad season, it's a bad season. They lose a hundred games. It's going to be embarrassing. I'm going to catch a lot of hell because it's a big market franchise. It's not supposed to lose that many games ever. But I don't care. I'm just glad to have my team back. And then they won. And that was that was cool. Then they then they won again. And then they won again. And then they won again and again. And now we're on a six game winning streak. Here's where the rubber meets the road. Here's where we get we're getting to the, we're not really quite at the dick cutting because it's so early in the season, but where were we find out if we're men or boys. We got a series coming up against the Minnesota Twins. That that is going to to mark are the Red Sox pretenders? Are they for real? And and beating up on the Rays, beating up on the Orioles, especially getting some revenge after the Orioles beat up on us, is one thing. Going on the road, going to Minnesota, Target Field, one of the best teams in baseball. A lot of people picked Minnesota to win the World Series this year. I think it's one of the most loaded lineups in baseball. I think they're really good. It's going to be the test. It's going to tell me a lot about my team. But I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I love, love, love baseball being back. One more thing about baseball I want to talk about. This is college baseball now. We're going to get into some college baseball. Very little general sweeping strokes because most people out in the ethos don't watch college baseball. But for those who do, they know what I'm about to talk about here. I know that Gary and I sound like some blowhards a lot of times when we talk about our SEC biases and prejudice in football. I understand that that's obnoxious to a lot of the country, probably to everybody. Okay, I, I get it. Okay, I know I have flaws. 
I, I understand them. And I apologize for them a little bit. Um, the dominance that the SEC is in football isn't close to what the SEC is in baseball. Hear me when I say that. Alabama and Georgia have been freakishly good. LSU had one insane run in 2019, greatest football team of all time. Uh, not close to how dominant the SEC has been in baseball. Okay? This year, just another one of those years. LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Tennessee, all <clears throat> great teams, very good teams. I'm talking – Top 10 baseball teams, Florida, throw them in there. Same thing. All are getting smoked, completely destroyed when they go up against Vanderbilt and when they go up against Arkansas. And how the stars and moon align to where Vanderbilt and Arkansas do not play each other in the regular season in the SEC tournament, when we get to that, which we're coming up on that not too long from now, I believe we're on a collision court. Now, I want my LSU Tigers to get hot and find a way to win. I don't think that's going to happen, and I'm telling you, we're on a collision course to see Vandy and Arkansas in the SEC championships. And then I think that's the two best teams in the country. I think they're going to – they're on a collision course to Omaha as well. I really believe that. I really do. I don't think there's another. I think there are, there's 50 feet of crap between then and everybody else. And those other teams that are between that 50 foot of crap, I think are really, really good teams. Vanderbilt's got two starters that right now, if they were in the major leagues, I, I think those guys could be 15 game winners. I, I've In hyperbole, I've said they're 20 game winners in the majors. They really could be 15 game winners. They're that good. They're that talented. And Arkansas's offense is, is one of the best I've ever seen in college baseball. And, and I grew up watching the LSU Mash Brothers. Okay, I'm talking teams that just smoked it. Listen, LSU's won a lot of national championships in baseball. It wasn't because of pitching, all right? Let me tell you that. They hit the ball. They hit it far, okay? They hit it a lot. I haven't seen an offense like this in Arkansas. I mean, this really is just a matchup of two of the best at what they do that collide with one another. I hope we get it in the SEC, and then I hope we get another rematch in Omaha for the championship game because these are the two best teams, and it's not close. It's not close. If you like pitching, find a way to watch Vanderbilt play. Just find a way to watch a series of theirs. These guys are going to blow your freaking mind. They're really that good. They're that talented. And and if you love baseball, you like hitting, you want to see some guys swing the long ball, find a way to watch Arkansas. You, do yourself a favor. They're really that good, and they're exciting to watch. Okay, That's not boring baseball at all. I love college baseball. I keep up with it. It's, it's one of those sports that we don't talk about ever because it's just hard to have storylines for sports where people don't really cover the sport. And if you want to find info about it, there are guys that cover it deeply, deeply. If you love college baseball and you're looking for a podcast to listen to, listen, get into a podcast called 11.7, all right? 11.7, they do nothing but college baseball. And they're great at it. They're the, they're the best at it, okay? I don't care what anybody else says. There's not another podcast out there that's better than them at college baseball. All right, that's the list. That's it, if you love this stuff. But they're going to go deep into the weeds and they're going to cover – the sport, and they're going to cover the country, all right? That, they're not SEC homers. Neither one of them are SEC guys. They understand where the bread is buttered, though. They understand the sports fans and the, 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 the insanity that the SEC is. We are nuts. It's one of the reasons. I mean, listen, what's the slogan? It just means more, right? <laughs> it means more at everything. We're insane, okay? And, and so just give it a try. If you love baseball but you've never really gotten into college baseball – a, find any college baseball to watch. There are a lot of really good teams out there right now. The SEC is really good. I'm, I'm not. This is not my biased opinion. Okay, this is very true. The SEC is really good. My LSU Tigers are a really good baseball team. I'm here to tell you they're a really good baseball team. 
they are getting smoked by Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Mississippi State. Like they're like they're getting beat to death by these teams, and they're a really good team. They play everybody else, they kill them. So it, it's it's not a top heavy thing like football. This is a thing where we go seven or eight teams deep in the top twenty five, and and almost all of the top ten is just SEC guys. It's fun. It's exciting. Check those things out. Check those teams out. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate Gary uh, swapping with me. I want to say that publicly. Thank you for him uh, making my life a little bit easier. Uh, On our Wednesday live podcast that we do, uh, I'm going to be – Gary's not going to be solo. I'm going to have him call me. I'm going to be on the road driving my way back, and uh, and, and we we will do the pod then. So you'll still get to hear my voice, and you'll have the luxury of not having to see my face, and that'll be good for you, um, and uh, and and get to be on it. I we I do appreciate you guys. I, I say this every show at the end of it. Thank you. If you like the podcast, please subscribe. Please give us a review if you're on Apple. They mean a lot. Five stars. <clears throat> it really helps out. The if you want to hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Chris B Giannini. Um, you can see it on, 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 on YouTube. If you're, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook or on, on, I don't even know where all the places Gary puts this thing out at, but I want to say thank you. I appreciate it. And, um, hope you guys have a good night, have a great week and, uh, we'll see you out there. Thanks for listening to the winning cures, everything podcast. The website is winning cures, everything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.